Now the other thing that you can do using topographic maps is work out direction of things. Now, to work out directions, we use a compass. Now there are fancy different sorts of compasses with flips and mirrors and all sorts of different things. This one is a mirror. Um, I don't really ever use them. Um, you use them outside if you're doing a lot of orienteering sometimes. I just like to use these basic compasses here, especially when we're using paper maps. Okay, if you want to report the direction um, of something to another, that's called a bearing. And there are several ways of recording bearings, and we'll look at each of those. Okay, so when we talk about bearings, really all we're talking about is a direction. And so we just use north, south, east, and west if we're talking about the main cardinal points of a compass. And then we divide up the compass into 360 degrees. So north would be 0 degrees, or 360 degrees, but we say 0 degrees. South is 180 degrees, it's just the opposite direction. East would be 90 degrees, and west 270 degrees. There are in fact 32 cardinal points of the compass. North, nor, nor east, nor east, east, nor east, and so forth. But there are, those are the main 16 that we use, and there are actually other ones in between, very old fashioned things. Google it if you want to. So, when we talk about bearings, the purpose of a bearing is to give an accurate indication of direction from one point to another. Simply, a bearing is an angle. And it's the angle measured clockwise from a fixed zero line north. So we take zero as north as zero, and then take all our bearings from zero. Um, now, there are several types. We can take grid bearings when the bearings are taken from a map, and we'll look at that on this. There's magnetic bearings when we take a bearing out in the field, and that's when we use a, a compass, or we use a compass needle. Now, you can take a bearing on a map using a, a protractor or, in fact, a compass. Now, I'll show you it using a compass, but if you don't have a compass, that's okay. You can, in fact, do it using a protractor. Just remember that you're taking your directions, your bearings, from zero being north. Okay, so here are just some bearings if you don't quite know what we're talking about. So a 90 degree bearing is directly east, like this. A 45 degree bearing would be northeast. Okay, so the dotted line shows north, 90 degrees is, the, is our bearing, that's the direction we want to go. Um, and then if we go all the way around to west, that would be 270 degrees. That's 270 degrees away from zero or north. <coughs> Um, on the desk, we I'm using a silver compass. There are other types called prismatic compasses. Now, a silver compass just has this sort of makeup with a base plate. There'll be an arrow showing the direction of travel. You've got your magnetic needle. Then you have your uh, compass housing, which has the degrees on it. And that spins, that turns, and I'll show you that in close-up when we get to the, doing the map. Now, importantly, there are these lines on the bottom of the compass housing, and they turn as well with when you turn the, uh, the compass housing. Um, that's in, that becomes important, and hopefully I'll demonstrate that to you. Now, you can use these to take a bearing on a map. Use this, use this compass to take a bearing on a map, in which case you don't worry about the needle, or you can take this to use a to get a bearing out in the field when you do use the magnetic properties of the compass. Prismatic compass, compasses are slightly fancier and we don't really, um, we're not going to use one of those. We're just going to use our silver compass. Okay, now the other thing to know about are the different north points. Who would have thought? There are different north points. There's true north, which is the north that is at the pole that uh, is at the top of the Earth's axis around which the Earth spins. There's magnetic north, 
which is what the compass needle points to, and it follows the magnetic field of the Earth, driven by the iron and nickel core of the Earth. Magnetic north. Um, now it's somewhere in the far north Arctic, and it moves around as well. It's not completely stable, and we'll look at that in a bit more detail um, a bit later on. And then there's grid north, and that is the north that is represented on your paper-based maps. Now, you'll, when you look at the map, when we look at it on the desk, I'll, sh I'll show you the grids, and they are very faint lines overlaid on the top of topographic maps. Um, we call them Eastings, and I'll explain that a bit more later on. And they point to grid north. So you've got true north, magnetic north, and grid north. Um, grid north is not exactly true north. And in fact, we don't, the, there's a difference between true north and grid north, and that's called its convergence, and we'll look at that in a second. When we use, when we're looking at maps, we only use grid north and magnetic north. Grid north when we're just looking at north on a map, and magnetic north when we are out in the field. We don't worry about true north. Okay, so this is the difference between grid north and magnetic north. It differs depending on where you are on the Earth's surface. Strange, huh? And you need to know the magnetic variation at the location where you're taking your bearings. Okay. So it moves continually, and the maps will tell you. Okay, now on a map, you'll see this diagram here on the right. True north, grid north, and magnetic north. It says on the map, that those different norths are shown diagrammatically for the centre of the map, and then there'll be this statement below that. In this case, it's magnetic north is correct for 1995 and moves easterly by 0 0.1 degrees in about four years. So what that means is that here you have... So this map was obviously made in 1995, and in 1995, the difference between magnetic north and grid north is this angle here and it will usually tell you what that difference is. Okay, it'll tell you what that difference is. So on the maps that we use, it says 11 degrees, all right? Um, oh, it says it here. So the grid to magnetic angle is 1.4 degrees, okay? So that's the difference between magnetic north and grid north is 1.4 degrees in 1995. And then it continues to move further east by 0.1 degrees in four years. So if you were looking at this 40 years later, then that would be 10 groups of 0.1 degrees. So you would have to add an extra degree. So in 40 years time from 1995, so in 2035, the grid to magnetic angle would be 2.4 degrees. And that's important, as you'll see a little later on. We'll see in a minute. So whatever year that you're currently taking your uh, your bearing, so in 2020, you would need to work out how far magnetic north has moved in the intervening time between 1995 and 2020. Work it out using this um, this ratio here, 0 0.1 degrees in, in four years, to get your current grid to magnetic angle. Once you know that, you can then convert between grid bearings and magnetic bearings. Now, it's important Take a moment. It's important to understand this, and I run, I do this again with the map itself. But if you take a bearing on a paper-based map and you tell somebody out in the field that bearing, so you you might say to them, they might say, "Oh, what's the bearing of the fire <clears throat> that I need to go and fight, or whatever?" And you look at your map, you know where they are, you know where the where the fire is, and you take your you read the direction on the map and then you tell them the direction, if they just followed that bearing, they would end up in the wrong place because they'd be following their compass. So if they're out in the field and using a compass, you need to convert your grid bearing that you've measured off the map to a magnetic bearing. To do that, to go from grid, oops, to, go from grid to magnetic, you subtract the difference. To go from magnetic out in the field to a grid bearing, you would add. So if your grid convergence is 2.4 degrees, 
So if you were going from a grid bearing to a magnetic bearing, and let's say that you'd worked out that your grid bearing for whatever reason was 45 degrees, and you'd worked out that the magnetic variation was two degrees, you would subtract two degrees from your 45 degrees and tell the person in the field that they would have to follow a bearing of 43 degrees. That was a bit rushed, I know. Hopefully it'll make more sense when we're actually doing it with the map. Uh, back bearings are just simply the direction, the opposite direction. So if you're taking a bearing from something to something else, well, the back bearing would just be the direction from that something else back to you. So it's the back, it's the bearing immediately opposite the current bearing. You would add 180 degrees if the bearing is smaller than 180 degrees. So that's this sort of um, relationship. There's your bearing. So if you were going this bearing here, which looks like about I don't know, 85 degrees, then the back bearing would be 85 degrees plus 180 degrees. Okay, so 85 degrees would be from here out to the right there, out to the east, whereas the back bearing is from the from here looking back towards the west. Similarly, you would subtract 180 degrees if the bearing is larger than 180 degrees. So your bearing in this case, the red one, is um, about 200 and let's say 260. Well, if you wanted to give the back bearing, you would just subtract 180 degrees from 260, and that would be the back bearing. Now, on a map, the grid lines, the eastings, go north-south on what's known, and they point to grid north, okay? And that's the, the, the north reference point we use when we're using these paper-based maps. There's magnetic north and there's true north, but we're just going to use grid north. Okay, so let's say we want to go from or determine the bearing from the abattoirs, for whatever reason, uh, to Red Hill up here. From the abattoirs to Red Hill. Okay, so what you want to do when you're working out a bearing on the map is to place the center of the compass on the abattoirs, turn the arrow to point to wherever it is that you want to go to, which is Red Hill, all right? And you can make sure that it's going the right spot. Use a ruler if you like, okay? And then what you do is you turn the dial of the compass. The needle makes no difference. This, this has no bearing on the determination of this compass bearing. Then you turn the compass dial until the lines that are on the bottom of the compass, that you can see moving there, line up or are parallel with the nearest easting or northing. Okay? So when they're parallel, then you can be happy and you can stop. Okay? If you are finding it hard to see a easting or no, sorry an easting uh, on the map, you can use this trick. Because you've got the compass on the uh, on the right bearing, you know that the compass is pointing. Get a ruler, and you can move that compass until you're directly over an easting you're still pointing in the same direction so it doesn't matter if you move the compass as so long as you keep it still pointing towards your point of interest and once you can see the bearing underneath see the easting underneath the compass then that should make it easier to line up and there we go and then once you've got that you then read your bearing off the edge of the compass dial and it's this one says 50 six so that's 56 degrees that's my bearing all right 56 degrees okay so that's your how you work out bearings using a uh, using the grid using grid north now that's all well and good but one of the things that 
I guess not so much these days, but nonetheless, it's useful to know this because it gives you that basic understanding that if all the whole world goes pear-shaped, hmm, perhaps it has, um, that uh, it's just useful to know um, this this technique, which has been used for millions of years, uh, millions of years, been used for hundreds of years to to work out um, direction, and that's of course using the magnetic um, field of the Earth. So we can take a magnetic bearing from somewhere to somewhere else using a compass, which is what compasses are used for. Okay, so we're going to take a magnetic bearing, but what I'm going to do is do it outside. And this map here, the 1 to 100,000 map, has my house on it. And so I live about there in Bungoanna. And I have often wondered, there's a hill that I can see to the south. So I'm going to go out and take a bearing to that hill and see if I can find out which of these hills on the range that's across the river that I can see that I'm looking at through a gap in the trees. I've always wanted, never done it before. So to do that, we need our compass and we need to go outside. So I'm going to take a magnetic bearing to that hill between the two trees over there. So to do that, I point the arrow on the compass to my point of interest, and then I turn the dial of the um, of the compass so that north on the dial lines up with the needle, which is pointing to magnetic north. So I take my bearing, okay, so I'm pointing in that direction, and then I move the dial lined up with the needle, and it's 160 degrees. That's it. All right, so we're back in. And we measured that as 160 degrees. Okay, so it's 160 degrees, great, that's fine. The problem is though, that if I then just measure 160 degrees, which I can do using my compass, we take our compass and we turn the dial so that 160 is aligned with the arrow. We place the center of the compass over your location, which you know is on that road there. And then we turn the whole compass until those lines are parallel. The lines on the, so the whole compass, not just the, the dial, the whole compass, all right, that, until those lines are parallel with the eastings. Okay, and then that tells you that what you were looking at, follow the line of the arrow, was something along here. So it could have been that hill where the gun club is. Um, all right, so perhaps this ridge here, or this point, this high point here. But the problem we have is that we used magnetic north outside with the compass needle, and we're using grid north here. Those are two different things, okay? They differ, as I'll show in this presentation here. out then our how do we convert our magnetic bearing to our grid bearing so to do that we use this diagram down here this diagram shows the difference between the magnetic north which you would be reading out in the field with a compass and grid north because magnetic north moves around we need to know the difference then between magnetic north in a particular year and if we're going to try and compare it to bearings on a map using grid north. It also shows true north, 
which is to the uh, to the pole, to the axis upon which the Earth spins, but we don't use that one. We're just using magnetic north and grid north. And the diagram says in the description, the grid to magnetic angle is 200 mils. We don't worry about that. It's 11 degrees. Okay. So when this and then underneath it says true north, grid north, and magnetic north, as shown diagrammatically for the center of this map. Magnetic north is correct for 1980, so that's the 11 degrees, and moves easterly by 2 mils, or 0.1 degrees, in about two years. So with that information, we can now convert our magnetic bearing to our grid bearing. I'll show you how to do that. We take another piece of paper, And from the information, we know that in 1980, the difference was 11 degrees. It moves 0 0.1 degrees in two years. We took our magnetic bearing in 2020, so that's 40 years difference, which is 20 groups of two years, so that would be 20 times 0 0.1 degrees, which is 2 degrees. And going back to the description, it says it moves easterly by 0 0.1 degrees. So it's already 11 degrees towards the east. It moves a further 2 degrees in those 40 years. So in 2020, the magnetic declination is 13 degrees. Now, to convert from grid to magnetic you subtract, to convert to magnetic to grid you add. So we want to go from magnetic to grid, so our magnetic, our magnetic bearing was 160 degrees. We would add our difference and end up with 173 degrees is our grid bearing, which is a significant difference. So now let's have a look at what that difference actually looks like on the map. Okay, so here's our map, here's our compass, and there are different ways of doing this, orient orientating the, the compass in different ways, but this is the way, the way I do it. First thing I do is, if I, uh, first thing I do is rotate the dial of the um, compass to my bearing that I want to plot onto the map. So that's 173 degrees. So turning it around until 173 degrees is over that black line, which is around about there. Okay, so that's my bearing. I then need to place the compass so that the lines underneath the dial here are parallel to our Eastings, because that's north, so I want the compass to point north. I can ignore the, the needle, which will move around. So I now need to just place my compass over my spot, my house, and then move the whole compass so that the lines on the bottom of the dial are parallel with the grid lines, with the Eastings. So that means now that this is now pointing correctly aligned to grid north, to grid north. Okay, so that's grid north. My bearing is already recorded on the dial itself at 173. That arrow help, helpfully points me in the right direction. And so I can put a, a square ruler against the, the compass. And you can see now that in fact, what I was looking at wasn't the hill where the gun club was, which is over here. It's now much further to the west on a different hill somewhere over here. I'd say it's probably that raised area right there. Okay. So that just shows you the importance of knowing the difference between bearings out in the field using magnetic and being able to convert them to grid bearings. Of course, if you do it the other way around and you have a grid bearing and you want to report it that direction to somebody in the field with a compass, you need to convert from grid to magnetic and in that case, you look at your map, work out the difference, and then subtract that 
from the grid bearing that you that you measure off the map to report it as a magnetic bearing.